When is a fever more than just a fever? When is a mosquito bite more than just an itchy nuisance? Those are the concerns of more than 3 billion people in more than 100 countries. These people are at risk of one of the largest and growing public health threats, dengue fever. Dengue fever is caused by a virus and that virus is transmitted by mosquitoes, but it's also a disease of fear. My own first exposure to that fear was in January of 2009 uh, in a ward in northern Thailand. And while dengue can affect people of any age, it's primarily a disease of children. So this ward was full of sick children, uh, two to a bed. Some were crying, uh, some were too sick to cry. There were anxious parents and it was clear that some of these parents had slept on the floor the night before. And as a recent father, uh, that left a lasting impression on me. What I wasn't ready for as a doctor was the degree of anxiety that I saw in the healthcare staff. And to understand that fear and anxiety, I think it's important to understand a little bit more about dengue. Uh, it, it all starts simply enough, there's that mosquito uh, and the fever. But as that fever goes, the problem starts. Uh, the vast majority of children will get better, but some will get rapidly worse. Their blood vessels will become leaky. They will, their bodies will have to simultaneously cope with the fact that there's not enough fluid in their blood vessels and that there's too much fluid in their lungs. And so the treating doctors have a very narrow window, a few hours, in which they have to manage very critically this fluid balance. If they get it perfectly right, the mortality rate's at about 1%. If they don't, it can be as high as 4%. So this is terrifying. But dengue is about more than just what's happening in that ward. Uh, dengue outbreaks tend to occur in uh, lower to middle income countries in Asia and Latin America. And the financial impact of dengue can be crippling to families. These outbreaks can also cripple complete hospital systems. And we've seen something similar with COVID-19. And dengue is getting worse. There is now 30 times more dengue than there was 50 years ago. And this is driven by things that aren't going away. Climate change, urbanization, globalization. So dengue is now the fastest growing vector-borne viral disease globally. It is also the number one cause of fever in travelers that return from dengue endemic areas. And we're now seeing dengue in places that we haven't seen dengue before. Uh, we've had recently local outbreaks of dengue in places like Texas, in Florida, in Spain, uh, in France, in Tokyo. So dengue is clearly a very important global infectious disease. Back in 2019, before the current pandemic, the World Health Organization made a list of its top 10 public health threats. Uh, a pandemic was one of those. Uh, in addition, they had some big topics, uh, air pollution, climate change, antimicrobial resistance, and dengue was one of these. Now, the way that we typically handle infectious disease threats is with a vaccine. And so it's reasonable to ask, why hasn't a vaccine taken dengue off a list of major public health threats? You know, we, we saw with COVID that in a very short period of time, we had a number of vaccines against COVID. So what's, what's the story with, with dengue? I think I can speak for the many, many scientists that have spent decades working on a dengue vaccine that it's not easy. And I think there are three principal reasons for that. The first one is that there's no shortcut. For some vaccines and some diseases, there are immunological correlates of protection uh, or there are reliable animal models of infection. Dengue doesn't have these. So the only way to assess a vaccine against dengue is to conduct a very large phase three study, uh, which needs to occur over a number of years. The second reason is linked to the fact that there are four dengue serotypes. Now, infection with one serotype doesn't protect against the other three. And in fact, it can make that next infection more likely to be severe. So a vaccine needs to be designed to assess four dengue serotypes and in two populations, those who haven't 
had dengue before and those who have had dengue before. The third reason comes down to epidemiology. Uh, dengue is present in countries all the time. Uh, it's endemic. However, the real burden of dengue occurs in outbreaks that occur every three to five years. And these outbreaks are really important from a vaccine development perspective because they give us enough cases to be able to make an assessment of safety and efficacy. So we need to design a study that is large enough and geographically diverse enough to catch these outbreaks that are occurring every three to five years and for multiple serotypes. Uh, in the case of Takeda, uh, with our tetravalent dengue vaccine candidate, that meant enrolling more than 20,000 children aged between four and 16 in 26 different clinical sites in eight different countries. And that made it the largest interventional study that Takeda has ever conducted. Now, I mentioned earlier that I've been working on uh, vaccine development against, uh, on development of a vaccine against dengue since 2009. But there have been many, many dedicated scientists that have been working on dengue vaccine development uh, during the last 50 years. And I think we're actually making progress, particularly in the last 10 years. I am very proud to lead a team of dedicated, passionate and talented people uh, at Takeda, uh, where our mission is to reduce the burden of dengue with a vaccine. And I often look back at uh, that ward in northern Thailand, and I wonder what kind of difference a vaccine may have made. And I look forward to a day in the future when we have a vaccine that can significantly reduce that fear, that suffering, and that economic hardship that dengue brings to so many people. It's a long and a difficult journey, but it's one that we can't afford not to take.